Hafiday and good morning. It is now 10.03 a.m. and this public hearing is called to order. In accordance with the open government law, notices of this hearing were sent to all main media outlets, all senators and stakeholders five days in advance on May 22nd, and a second notice was sent out on May 25th. Today we'll be hearing bill number 273-34 as corrected by the prime sponsor, an act to repeal and reenact chapter two of title 29 Guam administrative rules and regulations relative to adopting the Guam solid waste authorities rules and regulations for solid waste management and operations. So just to give the, the community a, an outline of um, the progress that we have been making and in addressing uh, the rules and regulations for GSWA, uh, just a quick timeline on, timeline on March 28th, Document number 2018-34, GL-1816-94, GSWA's Board of Directors proposed new rules regarding the agency's solid waste management and operations were transmitted to the Speaker of the Guam Legislature. On April 3rd, that same document was referred by the Committee on Rules to the Committee on Housing, Utilities, Public Safety and Homeland Security. On April 17th, the Committee on Housing, Utilities, Public Safety, and Homeland Security held a public hearing on the GSWA's proposed new rules after hearing the committee worked with the board and management of GSWA on drafting a bill to implement the rules and regulations with concerns from the previous hearing that we had. And so um, I know there were also some concerns on why are we holding a, um, these rules and regulations in a bill format. And, and just to be clear, this is a very serious situation and in accordance with 5GCA, subsection 9303, uh, Charlie, no rule shall be effective until after compliance with the provisions of this section and 90 calendar days have elapsed from the date of filing with the Speaker of Ilas Latour and Guahan. After the public hearing and the 90 calendar days from the date of filing, the Speaker may certify and the Legislative Secretary attest to the default approval of compliance rules and regulations pursuant to this chapter. And so uh, also in the previous uh, annotation in that same section, part B, it states that we must have a public hearing within 75 calendar days on these rules and regulations. And so we wanted to make sure that we did what was appropriate and necessary considering that we are still in federal receivership rather than just allowing the rules and regulations to lapse, we would take a closer look at it and also um, allow for the public to share their concerns because, of course, this is a serious issue. This is something that GSWA's board has been working on to ensure that it is, um, to, to ensure that it is proper. And so working with the board and also with our legal team, uh, we now have this new bill before us for the rules and regulations of GSWA. And um, with that being said, um, I'd like to thank, first of all, Senator Duggan for joining me today. I'd like to, uh, Mr. Gow, I'd like to offer this moment to you to, what, if you'd like to provide some testimony or some context of the work that we've been doing, the changes that we've made, and some of the concerns that we addressed in this new bill to refine it. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, Senator Nelson, Senator Duggan, thank you very much uh, for giving us this opportunity and for also being so supportive in this endeavor. Um, as you know, um, this is a long road that we have, uh, the, the government has undertaken uh, in receivership, uh, be put in receivership, and, and we, uh, we have to get our way out of receivership. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that uh, we need to be the master of our own destiny. Uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a municipal government, uh, we need to be responsible for, for certain aspects of that, of, of the, of the um, municipal services that are provided to the to the uh, public and so and I think solid waste is, is definitely one of those and, and this uh, this um, uh, these rules and regulations again are another a step in the in the process of exiting receivership and becoming um, responsible for our own uh, uh, our own municipal solid waste um, I would like to say that we did work closely with uh, with you and with uh, with uh, Senator Ada uh, on the feedback, and we appreciate all of your your feedback and your support. And again, we do a, uh, we fully support the uh, the changes that were made. And uh, I understand uh, the uh, uh, what you were talking about in putting this in a bill format to help uh, to help um, facilitate the passage. And I appreciate that very much as well. Uh, once again, um, we are. Uh, 
uh, you know, as, as, a, as speaking with, on behalf of the board, we're uh, supporting of these these new new rules and regulations in order for us to um, to make sure that we are um, uh, maintaining the system that is put in that was put in place that has been put in place by the by the receiver, so that we can continue to uh, uh, operate our municipal solid waste system uh, efficiently and effectively, and again uh, demonstrate uh, to um, to the court that we are. Uh, ready, willing, and able to handle our own uh, uh, municipal solid waste here in the island of Guam. Thank you, Mr. Gill. And I'd also like to recognize uh, Mr. Venus and Mr. Martin that is here with us today. Um, Senator Elgin, do you, do you have any questions? I know you highlighted. First of all, I just want to thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to ask a few questions. And I think it's always important that the public has an opportunity to be able to review some of these uh, proposals and incorporate, I understand that you incorporated some additional amendments, so I certainly appreciate that. The, I want to uh, also thank you for your direct statement about, as a municipal government, we really should be the master of our own destiny, mm -hmm. because that is, is really at the heart of operating our government and ensuring that the people of Guam receive uh, the services and, and the functions are provided that would address some of the concerns. The issue I have with regards to this particular rules and regs, I understand that the courts have been advocating for its timely adoption and obviously this proposal is much better than it was a few months back because of all the, uh, some of the amendments that have been incorporated in here. But when sh should this be adopted by the legislative body? Is this like the final action by our government that the judge would now sit down and say, okay, now that you have rules and regs in place, I'm ready to release it to, back to the government of Guam? Um, I, I wish I could answer that question positively. Uh, however, um, as I was I was just you know um, chatting with the, the, the Senator Nelson about it. it's uh, I, I don't know um, we have submitted um, resp uh, responses the, the court has asked for readiness reports from uh, the receiver and from the US government and we've uh, submitted response to the receivers readiness report uh, with uh, in conjunction with the Attorney General's office um, the receiver um, uh, in our opinion is you know is uh, is there's a conflict of interest regarding determining whether you know the government is ready or not so so that that's one of our things and, and the other the other aspect the main argument behind our response to the to the court regarding a readiness report was was we've you know what is still outstanding that uh, required us to go into a, a consent decree you know, is the um, is the Lonfit River still being polluted? Is the is the, the ORDOT uh, dump closed? Is there a new landfill open? And if, if these things are resolved and and are no longer an issue, then why are we still in receivership? Why why is the U.S. government still um, uh, not let still uh, in control of of um, of our municipal solid waste, why isn't the government of Guam in control of its municipal solid waste such that, and, and, we, and allow the government to, to view all of the municipal services as a whole in providing services to the, the, the island, to, the, to, the, to, its, to its citizens, rather than a, a, excuse me, a very myopic view of a, of a specific set of services that are required. Again, that's 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 my opinion, and so um, so to, sorry, so Senator, to answer your question, I, I don't. I, I'd like to say yes, this is the last straw, but I don't. I don't think so. I think the, the court is still going to have a hearing on on the actual readiness of the management team of the government to, to take over, and there will be arguments, and we'll argue that we are ready and we want to take it over and we should take it over, and there'll be arguments on the other side that says we aren't ready, and and government of Guam can't handle it anymore, and. Etc. So, I mean, uh. thank you, uh, thank you very much for that response. Also, uh, you know, one thing that um, discovering over the I've discovered over the course of the last several months, in particular, with different entities, is that there are laws in place and there are rules and regulations in place 
that not everyone within a government agency is familiar with. Mm. And I say this because there was an oversight hearing, three separate oversight hearings with regards to the Tomorrowland Trust Commission. Mm. And one of the concerns that was brought up, at least from my perspective, is reading the law it's very simple language, it's direct. And for some odd reason, for many, many years, uh, some of the, the language and the requirements by law were, were being overlooked. And that's the, the responsibility of the AG's office to be able to ensure compliance, but also the commission members as well as the administrators. So from your perspective, serving as a member of the board and as chair, how would you go about um, ensuring that your personnel once the court allows for the official transfer, that your personnel are extremely knowledgeable of what the rules and regs are and the mandate and the laws and policies that that's mm -hmm. mandate the agency to operate. Yeah. Um, fair question, absolutely a fair question. Um, it, my view in, in his role as, uh, as a, a chairman of the board would be one to ensure that the, um, the management team was fully equipped to um, was was fully equipped and was mandated to ensure that the rules and regulations were propagated and and followed and adhered to. So so those would be whether it's um, uh, translated into a handbook, into a daily uh, standard oper operations procedure manual. You know those are the types of things that I would um, uh, as as a member of the board. Uh, you know. Um, delegate to the management team who, with the daily management to say, look, here are the rules and regulations. And, and, and unfortunately, this team was part of, part of writing this. So, so translating these into a standard operating procedure that can be um, disseminated to all the staff is, is the next logical step. Uh, now, um, in this particular case, what we've done is taking existing um, procedures that have been put in place and really um, um, written them down, uh, uh, highlighted them, uh, notated them, enumerated them, so that um, it's, uh, it is absolutely clear what the rules and regulations are, so that, we, um, so that if there is, does come a situation where somebody doesn't know, we can refer to the rules. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that assurance, because it's not only uh, signaling out the Tomorrowland Trust Commission, mm -hmm. but also the Guam Contractors License sure. Board, where the executive director was approving permits and rescind, rescinding permits from some of the businesses that already were granted mm -hmm. their contractor's yeah. license. Yeah. And the authority, by law, rested with, and still rests with the board. Mm -hmm. So th those are situations where it really comes back to the board members and management knowing and understanding the parameters, mm -hmm. the mandate, and the policies that they have to comply with because one of the comments that I shared uh, repeatedly at an oversight hearing over the license board was the law is on your side mm. but you must follow the law so yeah. so please uh, I, I take to heart the comments that you shared in terms of making sure that the management team is aware of the, the rules and regulations of the laws mm. uh, and that also the board members are very familiar with that so in fact uh, we have a government that is not only complying with the law uh, but doing what and uh, or providing services that should be provided in a particular fashion. So I, I appreciate your perspective. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Um, is there anyone else that would like to give testimony on the rules and regulations, or is it just you, Mr. Gill? Just uh, I believe it was just me. Okay, okay, very good. Um, you know, we've, we've been working on this for several months, and... Um, uh, I want to thank your team to uh, always being available to the questions that we received from the public and also that were addressed in the public hearing um, prior to. And I want to uh, commend you for your continued positivity and proactiveness to ensure that Guam is receiving back um, the GSWA and the rights that is duly responsible um, for, for the situation. Uh, I know it hasn't been easy for you. I've attended some of the court hearings and it always seemed like you were uh, you know, fighting against the Goliath, and uh, these rules and regulations were very important for this uh, for you to move forward. And I also know that the receivership also gave you a difficult time in even assisting you with developing the rules and regulations because they just kind of took it up and then 
turned it into a SOP and then just moved forward. And so really you had to understand the inner workings of, the, of uh, our solid waste industry to really develop these rules and regulations without really much help from the receivership. And so it was a kind of disconnect and the whole, hopefully there would have been a partnership in that, but I see that some of the pushback was done on the receivership's behalf. And so I want to thank you for you know, your due diligence and still moving forward and, and not letting anything get in the way of ensuring that we could be, like you said, the masters of our own destiny. Did you want to say something else, Senator? Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for your indulgence. And just one, one additional question. How would these rules and regs uh, affect our ratepayers? Um, currently, they would, there would be no impact on the ratepayers. These, um, these rules and regs are, reflect what has currently been in, put in place by the receiver. Uh, we did an economic impact statement and, and determined there would be no impact um, uh, for this particular set of rules and regulations. And these rules and regs, again, are, is a requirement by the courts to have in well, place prior to? Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say a requirement by the court. I mean, the interesting thing is we've gone from a, um, you know, um, before receivership, uh, the Department of, you know, public, public uh, the, the waste was handled by a division of the Department of Public Works. So since then, it has become, uh, you know, in, in receivership, it has become an autonomous agency. And it was painfully obvious that the uh, rules and regulations that were on the records, the official ones that, that this, this act repeals, were, were very much out of date. And the receiver had implemented his own uh, rules and regulations based on their best practices and, and, the, and the things that they had adopted. But he had never taken the, that step and never, uh, of actually enacting or enabling you know, uh, specific rules and regulations that reflect their practices. So this is, whether the court required it or not, it should be done. It's, this is the right thing to do um, because it would be, uh, it would, it, if someone were to refer to the rules and say, hey, it says in here that you do this and this and this, and if we said, well, no, we don't do that anymore. I mean, that, that's just not the right way to, to treat a rate payer or a customer. So, so, um, so it, it ended up being, yes, uh, one of the check marks on the boxes that the, that the court says, hey, have you done your rules and regulations? But in the end of the day, it, you know, it, it is the right thing to do. It is the right to update it. And, and the interesting thing, back to your, I'm sorry for going on, but back to your comment about, uh, you know, understanding the rules and regulations. I think we've, we've in going through this process, both the, the board and the management team have become intimately familiar with the rules and regulations uh, because we've had to update them and write them and analyze them. So, um, so we, I think we have a, a, a leg up, so to speak, versus some other agencies that might be having to, coming in and just saying, okay, you need to learn these. You didn't write them, you didn't create them, but you need to learn them. And so it gives us a little bit more of an insight into, uh, into those rules and regulations as to you know, why we came up with the particular rules. You, you know, you did mention that, thank you, Madam Chair. You did mention a, a little earlier that there was collaboration or, or some uh, cross discussion, the preparation of the rules and regs with the receiver. Yeah, correct. Can you there just was. Explain so, so, so first we had asked, you know, um, you know, when we said we need to do, adopt the rules and regulations, you know, uh, we are, we ha we have a management team, but the management team is not responsible for the daily uh, operations yet. They don't have any any specific authority. Um, so we asked the receiver, said, look, you are you you and your management team are paid to operate the the. Uh, um, department, the Guam Solid Waste Authority. Please enumerate your rules and regulations so that we can update them. And as we move out of receivership and transition, that we have the right rules. And so they had said, yes, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it, we're working on it, we're working on it. And then uh, right up to the last moment, they said, no, we don't think we can do it. Uh, we think you should write it yourself. And so then it was put upon us to write it ourselves. And so, so we came up and put it in a, in a format that we thought was was appropriate uh, based on advice of our, our council, and uh, and so and so when we did that, um, and then when we we proffered them, without much input from the receiver, the receiver came back and, and gave us some some comments, and then we also when we proffered them, we also got feedback from Senator Ada and Senator Nelson about other things, so there was a little bit of a a pushback, so to speak, a little you know that we we overcame though we we're, I, I think. Um, Based on on where we are today, and this format is, is, is I'm, I'm very um, confident that we'll be able to uh, to demonstrate to the court that our rules and regulations are are uh, are, um, are 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 sufficient for the uh, Guam Solid Waste Authority. 
Just so that our, our people would once again understand, I know the chair is, it has uh, done due diligence in terms of looking at the overall rules and regulations, but uh, the cost to the ratepayers of having a federal receiver today, can you just uh, remind our people out there in terms of how much this community is actually paying for a federal receiver, and it's very, very critical that we try to get this Guam Solid Waste Authority under the uh, control of the, the government of Guam so that we can, like you said, be the masters of our own destiny? Um, well, uh, okay, uh, sure. Um, the, um, the receivers are, are, are basically professional consultants, and they are um, they're very well experienced and well versed in all aspects of, of what they do. Uh, but they do it for, they, they, you know, they're part of a consulting firm. So as a result, you know, we're paying consulting rates for operational um, duties. Uh, and so that in and, in and of itself, by paying consulting rates, you know, we're, we think we're paying upwards of, you know, twice as much as we should for a management team that, that uh, would just be getting, if you were a regular full-time employee uh, running a, you know, $17 million, $18 million uh, municipal solid waste system, we think here's a fair salary. Uh, but with, based on what the receiver's consulting rates are, the, and all of their the benefits that they'd get from from being consultants, whether it's you know airfare, hotel, uh, you know uh, lodging, uh, things like that, uh, we we think that it's um it's it's a better value to to, to operate it ourselves. But what um, what exactly is that amount that right now the ratepayers are paying on an annualized basis? Well, you'd you'd have to kind of break it up into two different areas. There's the operational aspect, and then there's the capital the capital improvement aspect. Um, uh, I, I can't remember the exact number that we paid the receiver. Oh. About how much? So about th two and a half million, three million a year. So about two and a half million to three million a year is in receiver fees. But again, that that's broken up between operational pieces and, and capital expenditure pieces. So you can't you can't take that whole thing and say that it will go. I remember the capital expenditure pieces. No, but just go going off of just go, going off of the statement that you made a little earlier that uh, we could, if it was under the government of Guam, be paying possibly 50 percent of what the cost would be. So if right now we're paying approximately 2.5 million dollars a year for the federal receiver, then by absorbing the responsibility and moving forward with the Guam Solid Waste Authority Agency and the functions that that could conceivably result in $1 million or $1.5 million being redirected directly towards operations and assisting the ratepayers? Uh, yes. In a nutshell, it very basically, that could be possible. But there are other mitigating circumstances that, were, that are going to come at, at the exit of the, at the transition of the receivership that complicate that. And that, I'm, ta I'm specifically talking about the trustee that will be put in place at the end of the receivership. Thank you again for uh, yeah. your responses and providing feedback and for continuing to advocate that, in fact, this is a responsibility and a service that rightfully the government of Guam uh, needs to take full ownership yeah. and operate it the, uh, in accordance with your proposed rules and regulations as well as the mandate that established right. the Guam Solid Waste Authority. So thank you very much, Madam Chair, for your indulgence. Thank you, Senator. Um, just to confirm that the, uh, ex the receivership deadline is still on July 1st to end the receivership? Uh, yeah, yes, the court uh, said the, the receivership will end June 30th and has not said anything contrary to that to this particular point. Okay. And I just, you know, um, there, are, there are different uh, levels of play here with GSWA and, and this situation with the trustee that the court is ordering um, GSWA to uphold, I guess, some certain requirement. And so in the future, I'd like to have an informational hearing uh, with this transition. And so the people know exactly uh, the role of the trustee and how the money um, that is being utilized is, is spread apart, apart from the agency and also the requirements within ORDOT, the ORDOT dump, the landfill there. Okay, so if we're gonna have continuation uh, of, of meetings and so that we can prepare this informational hearing for the public to see just exactly the dynamic because it's a little bit complex no right. it took me a while to understand also right. and so um, we'd like to offer that also for the community so 
we'll be in continued con uh, communication. We'd, right. we'd be happy to participate. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it is now 10.28 a.m. This public hearing is now, call is, is now adjourned. Have a good day.